Mr. Murali Pule, Pile. Madam Deputy Speaker, before I start, I would like to give notice that the Honourable MPs Mr. Christopher de Souza and Mr. Lim Biao Chuan are also desirous of speaking on the motion standing in my name under Standing Order 2, subparagraph 8B of the Standing Orders. I therefore propose to share the 20 minutes of speaking time allotted to me with them. I would like to express my gratitude in advance to them for joining me to speak on this motion. May I proceed as proposed, ma'am? Yes, please do. Oblige. On the 4th of November 2020, I asked the Honourable Minister for Law and Home Affairs in this House about the merits of having a separate Judicial Services Commission, JSC, principally to deepen the competence of judicial officers. I am not alone in asking for the setup of the JSC. Honourable MPs from both sides of the House have made similar calls for a variety of reasons. The Honourable Minister's reply to my question was that in the current circumstances, the Integrated Legal Service Commission, LSC model, that we have for the legal service is probably the best for the time being. I agree with the Honourable Minister that the Integrated model served Singapore well. The LSC contributed indelibly to the upholding of the rule of law in Singapore. It ensured that our judiciary is both independent and impartial. Our judiciary is held in great esteem not just within Singapore, but also internationally. In a Min Law Public Perception Survey conducted in 2020, 90% of respondents indicated that they had trust and confidence in Singapore's legal system. Singapore was also ranked overall first out of 180 countries in the Heritage Foundation Index of Economic Freedom 2021 and was given a score of 90.8 for judicial effectiveness. The upholding of the rule of law in Singapore has directly resulted in Singapore's growth as an inclusive nation with good outcomes in education, opportunities for all, irrespective of race, religion or gender, care for the less fortunate, cohesion amongst people and low crime rates. What is good for today, however, may not be adequate for tomorrow. It is our work to improve our institutions over the years that has made us what we are. The point we should consider today is whether the integrated LSE model, which has served us well, needs to be adjusted with regard to the evolving responsibilities that will be placed on the judiciary in the future. The main arguments I make in support of this motion are as follows. Considering the increasing factual and legal complexities of the cases presented in court, quickening the pace of specialization amongst our judges will better equip them with the skills, tools, especially technological tools and experience to discharge their solemn duties consistently and at the highest standards. A separate JSC with its own secretariat set up under the constitution and vested with the power of appointment, control and human resource development of the judicial officers in the legal service will be in a better position to nurture a specialist core of judicial officers. Additionally, with the autonomous power to recruit, the JSC can exercise more flexibility and use a wider range of talents. For example, someone with experience in programming can be trained and taught law then he or she can navigate the technical facts of a case much better than a legally trained judge. That is a deeper, more specialised approach to intentionally growing our judicial service. Nonetheless, I must acknowledge that I make these points drawing from merely my own knowledge and experience as a legislator and a private legal practitioner. Hence, I'm calling on the government to study the feasibility of my proposal rather than presenting a specific case for it. Let me now say a few words on the significance of my proposal on fellow Singaporeans. Specialization amongst judges should not mean higher costs for litigants, 
Rather, what I have in mind is the opposite. With greater specialization, our judges will be more efficient and productive and in a position to further rein in legal costs. The end state that I envision is a specialist judiciary that ensures that its decisions remain consistently of the highest quality and delivered with due dispatch. Furthermore, it should allow litigants using its processes to be satisfied that they have been provided with good access to justice, their cases have been heard, and they've been treated fairly and impartially. Lastly, it is responsive and keeps abreast of fast-paced developments, particularly technological developments, that are making cases more complex. One good example of a technological development arose last year when the Court of Appeal had to deal with novel legal issues arising in the world of cryptocurrency algorithmic trading. A specialist judiciary that can achieve all this will strengthen our public's trust, confidence, and respect in our legal system. I now make the case for further specialization of the judiciary. I say further specialization because the judiciary has already developed specialist routes for some years now in response to the increasing complexity of cases. Let me cite some examples. The family justice courts were set up out of the recognition that family justice is a specialist discipline that requires specific focus and jurisprudential development. There have been dedicated specialist commercial lists in the general division of the High Court in areas such as building and construction, finance, securities, insolvency and trust, and arbitration. As a private practitioner in active legal practice for some time now, it is clear to me that the judiciary continues to hear and decide on more complex cases over the years. It is not easy to measure complexities, complexity of the cases in our courts objectively, but there are several proxies that can provide rough and ready guides. In an article titled The Development of Singapore Law, a Bicentennial Retrospective by the Honorable Andrew Pang J, Professor Go Yan Essi, and Professor Gerald So, it is stated that the average reported judgments comprise of 4,000 763 words in 2002. Now, the average count hovers around 11,000. This statistic is both for state and Supreme Court judgments. Between 2017 and 2020, based on my manual account, the Court of Appeal, the highest court of our land, has sat as a special five-judge bench for about 45 times to deal with novel and complex issues of law. There's also an upward trend of Singapore cases being cited and commented on overseas, including in the UK and Australian courts. This is an indication that our courts are increasingly having to grapple with frontier legal issues. I'll give three examples. First, the UK Supreme Court had occasion to cite two decisions of the Singapore Court of Appeal in its 2015 judgment on requirements to imply a term in contract law. Next, the New South Wales Supreme Court in 2016 quoted observations of the Singapore High Court on the role of liquidators in legal proceedings. Finally, the 2017 Court of Appeals reported approach to the issue of damages arising from a birth of a healthy child through IVF as a result of a medical professional negligently fertilizing an ovum using a sperm from a wrong source received much attention internationally. So our judges carry out a key element of providing order in society not just in Singapore, but at times in other common law countries. Our legal service has grown significantly too over the years. In 1965, our year of independence, we had 45 officers. Today, this has increased 18 times to over 800 officers, of which 30% are judicial officers. In 2014, in recognition of the need to specialize, our Prime Minister announced the restructuring of the legal service, which involved the introduction of two separate career tracks, judicial and legal, for legal service officers, LSOs. However, the specialization tracks are geared towards the middle rank of the legal service. Junior and senior officers still operate under a fully integrated model in respect of their career tracks. Respectfully, given the requirements of the future I have alluded to, I would think it's good to reconsider the central management of junior and senior officers deployed for judicial duties by the LSC. 
It seems to me there is a need to plan for longer runways for the junior officers within specific career tracks, leading to deeper specialization. Even at the top, the senior LSOs in the judiciary must devote more time and effort to continually upskill themselves so as to keep with the requirements of their jobs. The establishment of a JSC with its own secretariat can help. At this point in our country's development, there's also sufficient ballast in terms of the number of LSOs currently serving and expected to serve as judicial officers. Madam, the proposal to split the LSC into a JSC and LSC is admittedly a complex issue. I won't pretend that I've dealt with all the issues in my short speech. Instead, all I seek to do is to make a case for this government to agree to conduct a feasibility study on my pro proposal and revert to this House in due course. Thank you. Mr. Christopher de Souza. Madam, I stand in support of the adjournment motion filed by the Honourable Mr. Murali Pillay. The LSC has evolved over the years to adapt to the changing operating environment. The most significant change in recent times was in 2014, when there was a significant shift towards increasing specialisation through the introduction of specialist career tracks. This motion calls on the government to rethink our talent management frameworks and development of LSOs. As a practitioner, I have myself seen how much the legal profession as a whole has changed. LSOs occupy a special identity. They are part of the public service and also form a substantial proportion of the legal profession in Singapore. It is therefore important that they keep pace with the changes that are disrupting the profession. For example, digital trends and technology have expanded the frontiers of law. One example of a trend needing to be checked is the proliferation of online services on the dark web, which have facilitated the rise of complex cross-border cybercrime. This calls for deeper expertise amongst not just our law enforcement agencies, but also our prosecutors. Another example is the increasing use of artificial intelligence in various fields from financial services to legal services and even healthcare. This has given rise to many novel questions of law. One need only look at the increase in the number of law reform reports that have been published in various jurisdictions in this area. Our very own Singapore Academy of Law has published three reports in the past year in this area alone. I admit that there is a deli delicate balance between, uh, to be drawn between specialization and breadth of experience. As some have said, the world today needs not generalists per se, but deep generalists. These are lateral thinkers who can effectively combine different strands of thought and lessons from different contexts to produce innovative results. What we need is for both legal and judicial officers to pick up depth and breadth in a select number of specific disciplines or specialized areas in a way that allows them to synthesize skills and knowledge and in so doing, help the government innovate in a fast-changing world. Given the growth in the size of the legal service and the growth in the complexity of the work in both the legal and the judicial branches, there are now adequate sub-specializations within each branch that facilitate the development of such deep generalists. Having two services allows for functional separation. Each service can develop its own policies on performance management, recruitment, and training. I wish to share my humble view that if a Judicial Service Commission were to be established, movement of offices between the judiciary, the agency, and the various ministries 
should continue to be allowed in some form. This is because I am of the firm belief that breadth of exposure is key to the proper development and training of a legal service officer. This belief is born out of my own personal experiences as an LSO in the early days of my career. I started my career as a judicial officer, then was posted to the AGC, and then was posted back to the judiciary. I found this movement across branches to be very valuable in providing a more rounded and more informed view of the justice system in Singapore. Therefore, if a JSC is to be established, such movements should continue to be allowed in some form. And with that, Madam, I support this motion. Mr. Lim Biao Chuan. Madam Deputy Speaker, I support the adjournment motion by the Honourable Member for Bukit Batok SMC. I declare my interest in speaking on the motion as a practicing lawyer, as I do appear before judges in the course of my work. The judiciary is one of the three organs of state, the other two being the, legis the legislature and the executive. As an independent public institution, the role of the judiciary is to uphold the law and ensure justice is accessible to all the citizens of Singapore. In a recent survey by the Institute of, public, uh, of Policy Studies in March 20 this year, 82% of the respondents had either a great deal or quite a lot of trust in our courts. As our former Chief Justice Chan Se Kiong observed, there is a high level of trust in the quality and incorruptibility of our judicial system and infrastructure a strength that has anchored Singapore's economic development. Our present Chief Justice also recently said, society's regard for and trust in the courts is extremely precious. When I first started legal practice 32 years ago, we only had the Supreme Court and the Subordinates Court. Over the years, the laws have developed to cater to changing society and changing circumstances. The global economy has also changed, and our judicial system needs to keep up, keep up with such changes. Today, we have increased specialization to cater to a more diverse population, changing needs, and more complex cases. Take, for example, the criminal courts need to deal with brilliant and sophisticated criminal minds trying to cheat innocent victims of their monies. The civil courts had to deal with some very complicating civil disputes. Intellectual dis property litigation often involves cross-border disputes and disputes involving sophisticated financial instruments. We also had the family justice courts the Community Dispute Resolution Tribunal, and the Employment Claims Tribunal, and lately, uh, lastly, the Protection from Harassment Court, all of which requires specialised skills in the dispensation of justice to different categories of litigants. Judicial officers play an important role in the administration of justice, all the more so for state court judicial officers. These officers need more specialised skills and more not and more specialised knowledge to better understand the complex facts and how to apply the law to these facts. They need to have good judicial temperament and show empathy in dealing with members of public and firmness in dealing with criminals. As a family law practitioner, I wish to share that judges need to deal sensitively with spouses who are emotionally very highly emotional and they need to deal sensitively with children as well. Madam Deputy Speaker, the Legal Service Commission was set up under Article 111 of the Singapore Constitution. The LSC has played a very important role in staffing the judiciary, the AGC, and the various agencies like Insolvency Office, Public Trustees Office, Legal Bureau, and Legal Departments of the other government agencies. But having too frequent rotation of legal officers under the LSC may not allow them to develop greater depth of skills and expertise required in today's circumstances. Hence, I submit it is timely that we consider the need for a dedicated JSC to take over the human resource development functions of officers in the judiciary. This will allow the proposed JSC to actively source for suitable ju judicial officers to serve in the various specialised courts and to meet the challenges of the future. 
To ensure that we maintain a high level of trust in the judicial system, we need to ensure that our judicial officers are competent and able to dispense justice fairly, expeditiously, and to answer the needs, the, judi the judicial needs for our future. I am mindful that this proposal requires a constitutional amendment. Now, if the government is minded to move ahead with this proposed review, I would suggest that the government sets up a review committee to ensure that the composition of the new JSC and LSC remains robust and responsive to the new challenges ahead, especially in terms of HR and personnel management framework for the legal officers. I support the motion. Mr. K. Shamungan. Thank you, Madam Deputy Speaker. I thank Mr. Pillay for filing this uh, motion. And uh, let me first set out uh, the government's approach towards the legal service. The key question is, has always been, how do we uh, structure, design the legal service to continually build up our legal system, our institutions? And this has never been, it cannot be a one-off, a static exercise. It's a continuous exercise, continuously tending to it, systematic institution building to build, improve, ensure that the structure we have works best for us. Over the years, we have systematically built up the legal service. The enduring challenge has been our very small pool of talent limited by our small size. If you go back to the time of independence, we had 45 legal service officers and a total of 130 members in the bar or at the bar. And from those early days, the we have always considered the legal service as a critical institution in establishing the rule of law in Singapore. It's part of the DNA of Singapore's governance philosophy. The service provided a dedicated core of officers who, amongst other things, built a strong, trusted judiciary, prosecuted without fear or favor, and supported effective, uh, active, nimble policy making. They drafted all the laws that are passed by parliament and they defended and secured Singapore's interests internationally. As Singapore grew, our legal system gained strength. It had to grow and modernize while maintaining high standards of excellence. It had to attract its own share of talent and develop and deploy them well. As former Chief Justice and President of the LSC, the late Mr. Yong Pao House said, the legal service should be, and I quote, positioned as a premier service in the public uh, sector of Singapore, close quotes. At that time, and for many years after, the small number of LSOs meant that a fully integrated model where officers were actively deployed to both the judicial and legal branches uh, better met our needs. Even in 2006, we only had 290 LSOs. An integrated model was necessary for LSOs' career progress and for the LSC to respond nimbly to personnel needs. It also had the benefit of providing a breadth of postings to develop young officers, ensuring future leaders had the necessary experience spanning both the judicial and legal fields. In 2014, as members or some members might know, there was a significant shift. Uh, we made a significant shift. Uh, although we retained the integrated model, uh, a separate legal and judicial career tracks were introduced for LSOs in the middle ranks. Existing personnel boards were restructured into two personnel boards uh, delineated along uh, branch lines. The special personnel boards exercised jurisdiction over human resource functions, including promotions 
of LSOs in respect of grades below LSO grade 2. Today, LSOs below the LSO grade 2 constitute about 94% of LSOs. The integrated model on the whole was retained, particularly for those at the junior and senior ends of the spectrum. And that ensured that junior officers uh, were, are developed in different fields of legal work while preserving flexibility to deploy the limited number of senior officers to roles in both branches and to meet the needs of the service. The proposal for a separate judicial service, separate from the legal service, has arisen over the years, including after 2014. Looking at it as the legal service is now, I would say there are pros and cons either way. The challenge is to find the right balance for our circumstances needs. A specialist model accounts for a widening spread of competencies which are needed in the legal and judicial branches. Officers will have longer runways to acquire the skills and knowledge needed to operate in increasingly more complex environments. Each service will have the ability to develop its own uh, HR frameworks and talent development programs, which can be targeted to their needs. On the other hand, there are major benefits to an integrated model where officers rotate between branches. And the opportunity for a varied career helps the legal service attract and retain talent. And for LSOs who assume senior leadership positions later on, rotations give them a better uh, organizational perspective. An integrated model also makes it easier to meet manpower needs where more specialized capabilities are not required. Each time this question has risen, including as recently as last year, as Mr. Pillay pointed out, November, we decided, in our view, was the timing was not quite right. Our relatively limited talent pool remains a challenge, uh, albeit to a lesser degree. We now have about 800 LSOs, but this is objectively a small number operating in a small legal profession. England and Wales, for example, had almost 170,000 practicing solicitors and barristers in 2020, making up about 0.28% of uh, the UK population, uh, or uh, the <coughs> population of England and Wales. In comparison, Singapore had fewer than 6,000 legal practitioners, constituting 0.1% of our population. And yet, the UK still struggles to staff its judiciary. In 2017, the House of Lords Select Committee on the Constitution expressed serious concern about recruitment to the bench. And the then Lord Chancellor gave evidence that, and I quote, not having enough people coming forward to be judges was one of the biggest threats to the judiciary. But we left the door open for further consideration. Today, the three MPs have made a, uh, very compelling points. These have been made previously. Uh, they're asking us to move further towards specialization. They all identified the fast-paced disruptions to our legal environment and profession. I think we share common ground in that the benefits of specialization are likely to continue to grow in future with smaller trade-offs as the legal service continues growing. But the fundamental challenge of a limited talent pool remains. Could a new balance be found? Possibly provided certain desirable features of our current system, like ensuring the breadth of exposure, especially for younger officers, are retained in a sensible way. The question then is, when is the right time to move? Uh, we could take a wait and see approach, maintain the current system, make so small tweaks in line with the changing environment. We can also say, let's make a move now, uh, put ourselves on a better footing uh, for the future, because eventually, when the numbers grow further, we will have to, uh, or it makes sense to split the two services anyway. Um, this matter has come up uh, with the MPs uh, who spoke, as well as other MPs who have uh, spoken with us. And uh, you know, you've heard the points that they've made uh, quite passionately. H having heard that, perspective and feedback. 
the government is prepared to consider a restructuring of the legal service along the lines I referenced above. I think the leader of the opposition is sort of looking at me with wider eyes. We have set up a working group to study some of the issues that arise should any such restructuring proceed that will also give us a better sense. Uh, Mr. Lim had in his speech suggested uh, this, and we have moved ahead of the suggestion. The working group is co-chaired by the Attorney General and Senior Judge Chow Hik Tin. It comprises senior representatives from the Supreme Court, Attorney General's Chambers, Legal Service Commission Secretariat, Ministry of Law, and the Public Service Division. The government will consider findings of the working group and will make a further announcement in due course. Thank you, Madam Deputy Speaker. As many as of the opinion say aye. aye. To the contrary, say no. I think the ayes have it. The ayes have it. Order.